Hello everyone, I'm Jeanne Dontevieux Petitjean, a French exchange student, and I'll be sharing with you my analysis of anti timonian um, theory about uh, digital governance in the European Union. Sorry. So the first part of my analysis consists on uh, questioning the uh, advantages and limits of digital governance for the political leaders. So for them, uh, and I mean the ministers, members of the parliament, or candidates to electoral um, competition, uh, digital governance mainly constitutes a practical and financial advantage. Indeed, social networks give access to a wealth of information and messages that everybody um, uh, has the opportunity to view, share, uh, publish anytime and anywhere. Social networks are therefore a low-cost means of political communication, although their management requires time and a uh, certain mastery and reactivity to the immediacy that the social networks allow. Uh, as most of the young public is active on social media, it's also a way to reconnect with a younger audience, which I think is an important point. Um, and thus, social media make the distribution, repetition, and appropriation of public messages easier and more efficient. Um, overall, uh, social networks uh, allow to bypass the mass media and reach potential supporters directly, which I think is a really positive consequence of the use of um, social media for democratic purpose. Indeed, uh, even financially weak uh, political parties and groups have access to a new visibility um, that is uh, just as efficient uh, as any other communication um, um, method uh, for winning votes. The presence of political leaders uh, on the virtual stage of social networks seems to be increasingly important and even necessary. This is why uh, some theorists uh, talk about no tolerance for digital failure, uh, precisely meaning that the citizens have no tolerance um, for digital failure. However, uh, I think uh, political leaders have to be vigilant um, because it, like their presence on the social networks cannot completely replace their physical presence. Secondly, the citizens too can enjoy greater visibility through the use of social networks. Indeed, digital governance allows a better participation of citizens in the public debate and thus a better integration of them in the political decision-making process. To quote uh, and um, try to sum up this idea, uh, social networks open up opportunities to people who would not otherwise participate in policy making, as David Klorsberg and John S. Frizerk uh, mentioned in their article. So it's one of the other article we we had uh, for this uh, this work, this video work. Um, because of the time limitation, I cannot uh, further those points, but basically the interpersonal debates emerging um, through Twitter or Facebook, crowdsourcing um, platforms such as Ducat and the electronic voting are three examples mentioned in the article that shows how social networks um, allow people to participate more to their political life and to the, the decision-making process, process. However, there are some risks or limits. For example, um, there are socio-economic, socio geographical and generational divides that constitute inequality within the citizens. Indeed, no, not all of them have the means the knowledge or the situations required to participate in public debate via uh, those virtual platforms. Also, um, the problem of crowdsourcing uh, is about the reliability of certain information and opinions given uh, on those, uh, those platforms. Sorry for the background noise. And uh, for the e-voting example of Estonia, 
we have to keep in mind that uh, we have to be vigilant uh, towards the use of personal political orientations given on the internet. Uh, I mean that there are risks of manipulation and um, political abuse uh, through social media. In spite of those various risks, we have to keep in mind that uh, digital governance is an answer to the um, unprecedented and incessant digital boom. Um, thus, can we speak of a form of digital dictatorship when different authors emphasize how necessary um, our presence on the internet is? I mean that when we see uh, political leaders um, forced to have digital accounts or journalists forced to follow digital leaders, uh, political leaders sorry, on social networks, can we speak of a digital dictatorship?